is Sunny 95. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 614, hashtag 614. Representing Columbus here. Uh, that's pretty cool uh, little thing we discovered this morning. Uh, before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Okay, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. And we're streaming live on Facebook. Also, today's uh, uh, in about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from uh, DeSantis Florist. So if you just listen a little bit, you're going to have a chance to call in and win. The answer should be very obvious, okay? And I uh, want to wish everyone well at the uh, Columbus Marathon, which is just getting started. I think they probably just had the, 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 the first runners just probably took off. Okay, now, today's show is Fact or Fiction. We're going to bring you a fun look at dental facts and myths. All right, so we're going to test your knowledge and uh, maybe bring you some information that you didn't have, some misinformation that you had. Okay, so here's one. It's okay to let baby teeth rot out or be extracted because they're just going to fall out anyway. Is that fact or fiction? Give you a chance to think about it. Fact or fiction? That is fiction. All right, the reason is, is those baby teeth are designed to hold space for the adult teeth, and you need them to stay there their entire lifespan. If they're lost prematurely, the teeth on either side start to lean inward, or if it's a missing tooth on the bottom, the top tooth starts to drop down, or vice versa. And so when it's time for the adult tooth to come in, it doesn't have any room, and it gets blocked out. So not to mention the fact that you want your child to be able to chew properly and to be able to enjoy their food, you know, enjoy dinner, enjoy lunch, and uh, even if it is just mac and cheese <laughs> at the elite. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it is definitely fiction. You should not lose baby teeth prematurely. And by the way, if you do, and I have a little girl that came in this past week who is going to lose one prematurely, we're going to extract it, but not before we've made a space maintainer. So we're going to get an impression, and we're going to make this little, it's one band and a loop. So there's a band that goes on the, the big molar behind it, and then there's a little loop of wire that comes forward. It's just going to rest on the front tooth, the one next to it. And there's, it's, there's, it's, uh, there's an opening wide enough for the adult tooth to come in when it's time. And you just leave that in until the adult tooth is in. And then uh, you take it off, and it, it's like it never happened. Okay. Another one is drinking bottled or filtered water can increase how many cavities your child gets. Is that fact or fiction? Let me say it again. Drinking bottled or filtered water can increase how many cavities your child gets. Is that fact or fiction? Now, a lot of parents use filtered water. They buy bottled water because they think it's healthier, right? Don't want to drink that uh, tap water, uh, well water, whatever. But guess what? It will. That is fact. It will increase the number of cavities your children get, drinking filtered or bottled water. And again, I had another different young uh, girl come in. I think she's, uh, let's see, this one was six. No, this one was nine. This one was nine. And she has... Um, I want to say probably six cavities. Three of them are probably going to become baby root canals when we get in there. And for those, we do what are called pulpotomies, a little bit simpler root canal than an adult tooth, but it's the same thing, folks. It's still the cavity has gotten so deep it's gone into the nerve. And it was all caused by mom and dad using bottled water, thinking that it was best for their child and themselves, for that matter. So why is that? It's because filtered water and bottled water, they both filter out the fluoride. So we spent a lot of time, effort, and money. Uh, the, the most effective uh, public health um, 
initiative in history is fluoridating our water supply. And when we see children who have a lot of cavities, we just almost know they must be drinking well water that doesn't have enough fluoride in it, or they must be drinking filtered or bottled water. And uh, these are these are great parents, by the way. These are people who are, do, are trying to do everything they possibly can for their children to have a better life, and then they just don't even realize that the fluoride's been taken out. So keep that in mind. And if you are one of the families, one of the folks that is doing that, your options are, I believe, threefold. One is you can ask your dentist to prescribe fluoride drops, and you can, uh, depending on the age of your child, you either give them one drop or three drops um, each day in a dropper, like in their mouth. You can just drop it in and they swallow. Or you can mix up your own uh, fluoridated water by taking the bottled water you purchased and put a certain number of drops in a gallon. I believe it's, uh, I believe it's uh, five drops or, no, five mLs, five milliliters, which would be 25 drops. But don't take that as a uh, rote, folks. I'll check with your pharmacist or your dentist because I'm just doing that from memory. And then, um, let's see, what's the other one? So uh, making your own bottled water, the drops, or guess what? Start using tap water. <laughs> it really is okay. Just start using tap water. Columbus rank, ranks the highest, one of the highest in the nation, year by year, as having the best quality tap water. Okay. And if you have well water and you're concerned, you don't know if you have enough uh, fluoride in your water, you can call the Franklin County Extension Service and they will help you get your water tested so that you'll know just how much fluoride needs to be added. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me, next, next on my list is, uh, here's one, fact or fiction. Wisdom teeth do not need to be removed as long as they can come into the mouth properly. Another way to say that would be all wisdom teeth have to be removed. So which one of those is fact and which one of those is fiction? The uh, answer is wisdom teeth don't have to be removed as long as they come into the mouth properly and they function. The only reason they have to be removed in a lot of cases is because people don't have room for them and so they come in sideways or they don't come in at all um, you know, they're, they're, laying on the, uh, they're laying facing forward, and as they try to erupt, they're really pushing the other teeth forward. I've seen ones growing downward, inward, outward, uh, everything but straight. And so besides, uh, like, rubbing on a person's cheek if it's sticking outward, or rubbing on your tongue if it's sticking inward, uh, if it pops through a little bit, now you've got this little opening where food and bacteria can get trapped down inside. It's actually even worse if they've tried to come in and got stuck than if they stayed buried. However, staying buried is not good either because uh, when, we are f when we are first developing and we're an embryo, there are three types of tissue. There's endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. So uh, endoderm is, is uh, for inside, okay? Ectoderm is outside. Uh, teeth are considered ectoderm. If they stay buried, they are now uh, in the mesoderm area, an area that they're not supposed to be. And when you have ectoderm buried, you can get a cyst because your body says, wait a minute, this is supposed to be outside my body, not inside my body. I'm going to try to get rid of it. Okay? So um, that's why we take them out, even if they are not bothering you because we can see that they are really going to bother you or they already have started. You're just not aware of it. Okay. So remember, remember those first three because that's probably going to be Dr. Kavitko's question of the day in about two minutes. Uh, and what it was was that we were talking about... Um, uh, whether it's important to keep baby teeth for a lifetime, uh, whether drinking filtered or bottled water can increase the number of cavities your child gets, and whether wisdom teeth uh, need to be removed or not. Okay, but let's go on to another couple ones before that, um, before we do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. So and remember, if you want to pre-program your phone, it's 614-459-9769. 614-459-9769. You're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. Okay, here's another, fact or fiction. Teeth aren't designed to last a lifetime. Is that fact or is that fiction? Do, 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 right? Okay, uh, <laughs> Jeopardy. <laughs> anyway, that is fiction. Teeth are designed to last a lifetime, okay? They are definitely designed to last a lifetime. We didn't know that back in the 40s, 50s, and maybe early 60s, but we discovered that it was, uh, that they are, and that there is no reason why people can't all go to the grave with every tooth in their head. Okay? Uh, here's another one. Fact or fiction? I can't have implants if I'm over age 70. What do you think about that? I have had several patients say to me, especially when they're in their 80s or 90s, well, I'm too old to have implants. That is false. You can have implants at any time in your life. 
as long as you're healthy enough to, to, um, to undergo the surgery, and the surgery is not that traumatic when it comes to dental, and or unless you have a relatively severe osteoporosis where the bone just isn't of the quality that it will latch onto an implant, but that's pretty rare, honestly. Most people that have that are, are being treated for it. And, um, and so anyway, yeah, that is uh, absolute fiction. You can have uh, implants well up into your 90s. And I've actually placed implants, four implants, in a gentleman that was 91. Okay. So it looks like it's time for us to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. But before we do the contest, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. All right, and the question is, today's show is about fact or fiction. Which of the following statements is fact? A, it's important not to lose the baby teeth prematurely because they hold space for the adult teeth. B, drinking bottled water or filtered water can increase how many cavities your child gets. C, wisdom teeth do not need to be removed as long as they come into the mouth properly. Or D, all of the above. All right, the winner's going to receive free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call, 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavicko on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavicko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Dr. Kavitko! I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavicko & Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavicko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavicko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko & Associates today, 614-262-9500. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have Hemin, Cindy, Steve, and Jan, and uh, today's winner is going to be Hemin, if he has the right answer. Hey, Hemin, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Good. Did I pronounce it right? Yes, you did. Good. So what is the answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day? It's D. D, all of the above. That's right. Hemin, are, uh, what do you do for a living? I'm a pharmacist. Oh, perfect. I have a question. How close was I on the number of drops of uh, fluoride? <laughs> number of drops of fluoride? <laughs> yeah. Probably um, have to do some... 20 drops in one ml, but I, I've missed that part. I was oh. at the time. <laughs> okay. So we were talking about people making their own fluoridated water. How many drops of, say, luride would they have to put in a gallon? But, um, yeah, I think I said 25 drops or something. But uh, anyway, yeah. I told them, call the pharmacy. They'll figure it out, right? 
That's right. They'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. Hey, stay on the line. Going to get the information where to send those flowers. Thank you so much for listening. And for all the others that didn't win, Cindy, Steve, and Jen, please call back next week, okay? All right. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko, and this is Hashtag 614. It's, uh, <laughs> it's the line 614th episode of The Reasons We Smile. We are doing fact or fiction. We're talking about the things that uh, people may or may not have a misconception of. So let's go on to the next one. Here's one. All tooth decay will naturally heal itself, heal itself if you use fluoridated toothpaste and a pro-enamel type toothpaste. Is that fact or is that fiction? Now we've talked a lot about fluoride here in a, mi a minute ago. So let me think or let you think. The answer is fiction. It will not. And I think this is an important thing to talk about because you see those commercials all the time of uh, uh, where they're promoting these uh, cavity preventing, not just preventing, but healing, these cavity healing uh, toothpastes. And you know, folks, when you see those kinds of things on TV, they're not allowed to make those claims if there's not some truth to it. But they're not talking about the teeth with big holes in them. They're not talking about the teeth where the decay's already spread to the dentin, which is the majority of them. They're only talking about the ones where there's just a little bit of decay in the enamel and it hasn't even gone all the way through. And so I think people get this misconception that, heck, I don't have to worry about going to the dentist. I can just go ahead and, uh, uh, I can just go ahead and brush with this, you know, enamel repair stuff and maybe drink the city water like Dr. Kavitko said and I won't have to ever get a filling. Well, that's not true. Once you have a cavity, the only thing that's going to fix it is a dentist. Okay? It's the truth. All right. Here's one. Fact or fiction? A root canal involves surgically removing the roots of the tooth. Is that fact or fiction? Da, 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 right. Okay. So, <laughs> um, that is fiction. The root canal roots, the actual roots of the tooth, are still there. They are not uh, removed surgically. There is a procedure, by the way, where we re surgically remove uh, one of the roots. Uh, that's called an apicoectomy, but that's a whole different thing, and that's only after a root canal uh, failed for some reason. But anyway, <coughs> a root canal is not cutting off the roots. It's filling up the hollow center of all of the roots to the very end so that they are now sealed. Okay? And uh, so that is fiction. Okay, here's one. Fact or fiction. Periodontal disease will heal itself if I, if I just brush better and floss more. What do you think about that? The answer to that is fiction. Okay? Now, you do need to brush better and floss more, but if you haven't had the periodontal disease corrected uh, you, uh, by a dentist, then it's still going to be there. It doesn't, once you have it, you can't physically, possibly correct it yourself by um, just better brushing and flossing from that day forward. Why? Because at the point that you discover you have periodontal disease, or your dentist does, it's already so far down that you can't clean that deep. So people can clean about three millimeters below their gum line. When you have periodontal disease, you're looking at seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve millimeter depths. And you can't get the floss in there because the floss just goes straight across the top, right? And uh, your toothbrush can only go about three millimeters below. And even if you had a dental instrument or a, some kind of a pick that, that you had available to you, it would hurt if you shoved it down into the sulcus. Okay, I know because we have to do it, which is why I don't do it unless I've numb people. But you can't numb yourself. And even alcohol doesn't work on that in that regard, <laughs> so I don't think you can. Um, you're still going to scream if you're, even if you're drunk and you're doing something bad to your teeth. Okay, so here's one. Fact or fiction? You can brush away the enamel and dentin of your teeth by brushing back and forth. What do you think of that? Brushing away the enamel and the dentin. Enamel's pretty hard stuff, right? Can you brush it away with uh, nylon bristles? And uh, my producer's going, yes, and he's, he would be right. You can brush it away. <laughs> So that one is true. And so you have to be careful not to brush back and forth. Certainly don't scrub. And we all uh, recommend, when I say we all, just about every dentist out there recommends a soft toothbrush. It's probably okay to get a medium if, you, if you're just doing it softly because it won't take too long for your medium to become a soft. Uh, if you buy soft, which is what we do recommend, you do have to replace it about every month. And, you know, I have access to toothbrushes because I think I buy about $200 worth of them every month because I give them away to people. And so uh, I always have a bunch at home, and as soon as my brush uh, feels like it's not doing the job, I'll throw it away and grab a new one. I know it's hard to throw away a toothbrush. It really is. Has anyone ever thrown their toothbrush away and look at it and going, should I have done that? Can I get it out of the trash? Does the 30-second rule apply? You know? 
There's something about throwing that favorite toothbrush away that makes us all feel bad, but just throw it away and get a new one. Because and because you don't want to brush this, but you don't want to brush back and forth. You want to brush down on the upper, up on the lower. Make sure you get the backs of your teeth inside and out everywhere and be consciously thinking about which area am I brushing so that you're not going to miss any. Okay, the next one. Um, okay, so this is, is this fact or fiction? Incorrect toothbrushing can cause the need for a root canal. Incorrect toothbrushing can cause the need for a root canal. What do you think of that? Hmm, hmm. I bet you some of you know. The answer is yes. Absolutely yes. It actually happened to my dad. I've had it happen to some of my patients. Because these two are kind of related. They were brushing back and forth, and they kept doing it and kept doing it. And the nerve center of a tooth is in the middle. So about if you get halfway in, you're into the nerve. And so if you don't have, if you're not going to the dentist and they're not noticing your abrasions, your cervical abrasions where you're carving into it and they don't, you know, get it protected with a filling in time, because that's what we do, is we place tooth colored restorations uh, in these areas. Sometimes they actually wind up needing crowns. And that way your toothbrush can no longer attack that part of the tooth and the nerve stays patent and you don't need a root canal. Okay, so um, let's do, let's do, I'm looking at the clock, we'll do one more. Okay, here's another one, fact or fiction. If I have an abscessed tooth, all I need is some antibiotics for it to heal. If I have an abscessed tooth, all I need to do is get my dentist or my doctor to prescribe some antibiotics, and I'm good. Is that fact or is that fiction? My producer has it correct, he's shaking his head no, that is fiction. Right. Now, why is that? Because, you know, in your body, that's what everybody gets, right? We get an infection. We have a, an infection on our, in our arm or we have an infection on our toe. What, is, what happens? The doctor prescribes antibiotics. It goes away. So why not in the mouth? And it's a very good question, actually. But in the mouth, uh, this abscess, this infection, is caused by a dead nerve, which has dead blood vessels in a tooth. So the reality is, is once that happens, the bacteria that live inside of us all of the time can now go up into the hollow center of the tooth, into those hollow roots, into the hollow uh, pulp chamber, and hide and live. And they use the dead tissue as a food supply. And that's how they just, they just have a wonderful time. They have a party in there. So why don't antibiotics work? Because there's no blood flowing inside your tooth anymore. There's no way for the blood to reach the antibiotics. So keep in mind, we have antibodies circulating in our blood all of the time too. We don't necessarily need antibiotics if the antibodies can reach the area. But with no blood flowing there, the antibodies can't reach the area. So if we give a person antibiotics, which means there's even more of an antibacterial uh, effect than our own body, our own blood had, it's still not gonna work because the blood flow isn't getting to the source. The bacteria are separated and hidden from the blood flow. So that would definitely be um, uh, fiction. Okay, we're gonna go to a break. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, and we'll be right back. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reiger. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs>
If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 614 of The Reasons We Smile, hashtag 614, our area code. Happy to be representing Columbus today. We're having a fact or fiction type show where we're bringing you a look at dental facts and myths. And to the next one that we're going to talk about is fact or fiction. Tooth whitening weakens enamel. Tooth whitening weakens enamel. Is that fact or is that fiction? Give you a chance to think about that. A lot of people whiten their teeth. Uh, we didn't used to. So what's the deal? Is it, is it weakening our enamel? Um, the answer is it does not. <laughs> so my producer got that one wrong. <laughs> Tooth whitening doesn't weaken enamel. It simply uh, cleans it. So if you look at enamel under a big strong microscope, like an electron microscope, you'll see that it looks like a honeycomb, like a bee honeycomb. Lots of little holes. And in each of those holes, food particles can get trapped. A little bits of Cheetos and red wine and red cabbage and orange carrots and, you know, uh, yellow cheese. All of that, little tiny bits, stay behind. And when they're in those pores, it darkens the color of the teeth. And all we need to do, and within, at any age, other than kids, you wouldn't want to do it under age 14, but anybody else can have uh, tooth whitening because the gel grabs onto those little particles and it grabs it on out like little vacuum cleaner or like little uh, super glue things. Little tentacles go in, they grab onto it, they pull it out, and then you have the color of your teeth, uh, what you did when you were 16, which typically is much whiter than they are now. But it does not weaken enamel. Okay, now we've all heard that Mountain Dew is bad. So here's one. Um, fact or fiction. Diet Sprite, or Sierra Mist for that matter, cause less tooth decay than Mountain Dew. Is that fact or is that fiction? So let's say you're addicted to soda pop and you know Mountain Dew is bad, so you're going to start doing uh, even diet caffeine-free Sprite or Sierra Mist. What do you think? What do you think? Um, actually, that is fiction. doesn't matter what soda pop you drink. If you drink too much of it, you're going to get Mountain Dew mouth. We just happen to call it Mountain Dew mouth, which is, looks a lot like um, the people that do uh, meth methamphetamine. So there's another one called meth mouth, which is a little worse than Mountain Dew mouth. The reality is, is no matter what soda pop you're drinking, it's going to eat at your teeth. Literally, eat holes in your teeth, usually visible up at the gum line, like when you smile. We just finished up a gentleman that uh, had that. I'm talking some terrible, terrible cavities. Uh, like, just it just looked like we wouldn't even be able to save these teeth. And his was from soda pop, not Mountain Dew, just regular soda pop. Okay, so we're down to where we only have time for maybe one or two more. Here's one fact or fiction. You can't drive yourself home from a dental appointment if you have had laughing gas. Is that fact or is that fiction? That is fiction. You can see my producer was wrong on that one too. <laughs> but at least he's having fun. So, uh, uh, you know, laughing gas, here's the thing. And, and this is good for people to know because if you're nervous and you want to have, be sedated in some way, many people don't think they can so they don't even ask because they know they have to drive themselves home. But with laughing gas, Within five minutes of stop drinking it, when you st I'm sorry, when you stop inhaling it, you're perfectly fine and you can uh, drive yourself home. Okay, so laughing gas, you can drive yourself home. It's just the, uh, it's just, uh, uh, it's just, you're just like normal. I mean, maybe you were abnormal when you walked in, but you'll be the same degree of abnormal when you walk out. How's that? Okay, so I'm looking at the clock, and it looks like that's probably all the time we have today. We have more on the list, so we might have a future show that covers the same topic want to congratulate the uh, Buckeyes on their win on Friday and it looks like they're on their way to the maybe making the final four here at the end of the season but let me just say that's all the time I have don't forget to follow me on Twitter it's at Dr. Kvitko and if you please visit my office Facebook page and like us it's Dr. Kvitko and Associates uh, remember that all past episodes complete with video are available at thereasonswesmile.com be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station goodbye Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to thereasonswesmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, 
please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. Or send an email to speaking at the reasons we smile.com. 